Okay, so this one, so the first slide, um, we are differentiating the cells according to um, to different things, okay, into subpopulations. So, for example, uh, uh, the, the Kareems, all of the Kareems, we put them together, all of the Dayanas, we put them together, all of the Abdis, we put them together, okay? So how do we do this is depending on on their the way they look, the way they function, the way they differentiate, the way they mature. Okay, so this is called cell phenotyping. Cell phenotyping. We are uh, uh, we are basically differentiating those cells according to uh, the set of uh, cell mor morpho morphological features. Very very simple. Tamam. So the Dayanas, the Abdis, the, the Inases, the, or whatever, yes? So into different groups according to how they look and how they function and how they mature and uh, their structure. That's the uh, uh, first thing. And how they differ in those specific things is according to uh, the effect of the genotype and the environment. So the environment and their genotype affect the way they look, the way they function, yes? That's the first thing. The second thing, is cell immuno phenotype. And so we are differentiate in this part, we are differentiating cells, putting them into groups according to what is on their cell surface. In this case, antigens. And how do we do that? We use basically what we know, antibodies. We use antibodies, specific antibodies that would bind on the specific antigens on the cell surfaces, and we differentiate them into groups. طيب. And um, it's also influenced by the genotype and the environment. So the, gen the genes and the environment will affect what the cell would hold on their uh, surfaces. So in this case, the Kareems would have, let's say, red flags, holding red flags. All of those ones. Uh, I have a not a red flag. So, so <laughs> they're having red flags. And so, green flags, green green, flags. Yes, green flags. So Kareem holding green flags. Um, uh, uh, are basically the 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 green flags here are the antigens and so what we do is Haytham comes in the antibody and picks up Kareem that has the red red uh, or the green flag and we put them in one corner and that's why how we select for the Kareems that have that green flag okay these are the two any questions about this okay Let's move yes on. oh ask <laughs> Um, how are you? Nasi, <laughs> Nasi. Oh, Nasi. Next one. Uh, I'm, I'm really good, by the way, just to answer. Uh, assessment of immune cells. Okay, this is just the basic tests of method and how we can do this. The first one is complete blood count. We are counting those Kareems or those Inases or those Dianas. In this case, we are counting the blood cells, erythrocytes, blood cells. We're counting, we're counting the number of blood, ce uh, blood cells in the blood and according to their morphology. The second thing is the platelets. The platelets that we know is basically these fragments of cells that help in blood clotting. We are counting the platelets, okay? We are counting the peripheral um, cells that we uh, separated from the blood in the practical that we did last week. So basically we're choosing one type of cell and counting the number of that cell within the blood, okay? So complete blood count. Type cell immunophenotype evaluation. In this case, we are counting the number of cells that have a specific antigen on their cell surface, okay? And so in this case, we are using antibodies. Antibodies will help us count the number of cells that have, let's say, CD3 on their uh, uh, membrane or how many cells contain CD4 on their membrane tamam? and this is this is basically the two cysts that are mentioned here any question can you re repeat it the, uh, the second one yes so it's just just us counting the number of cells that contain the antigen that we are interested in for example how many cells in the blood in this solution contain the antigen on the surface CD3 and to use that, we basically use antibodies that bind to that CD3. And we can use some human-created methods to actually remove those cells, calculate how much they are, 
and boom, we have the numbers of the cells that contain CD3 only. Okay. Understood. Okay. Yep. Move on. Okay. For example, this one right here. Wow, this tastes amazing, by the way. <laughs> mm. uh, CD classification. CD stands for cluster of differentiation. How are scientists able to say that while the cells in the bone marrow are stem cells? Basically, they will look at their cell membrane and they say, okay, CD34 is present on the cell. Okay, then we know this cell is a stem cell. Come on. Mm -hmm. Now, stem cells, what are stem cells? These, these are the cells that are present within the body in specific locations, such as the, the bone, inside the bone marrow, okay, um, that will produce all the other cells that you have in your body. So what can uh, uh, blood cells, uh, white blood cells, whatever, yes? So they originate from a progenital cell called the stem cell. When, they, when we move down the tree, we see, um, in this case, we're talking about white blood cells, hence immunology, we are saying five different types. So this stem cell gives rise to, let's say, granulocytes, monocytes, T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, and thrombo thrombocytes. How do we uh, know that this cell is a B cell? If it has the CD19 or CD20, for example. Tamam? Yeah, go ahead. We always have CD45. Yes. So um, when I say, how did we know we have a B cell? It has CD19 or CD20. How do we know if this is a leukocyte? Or, uh, yes, a leukocyte. A leukocyte is a, is a white blood cell. Oh, huh? CD45. CD45. Leukocytes, what are they? Five different types. Granulocytes, monocytes, T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes, thrombocytes. Uh -huh. All of them, they share one... Thrombocytes. Mm -hmm. uh, leukocytes. Thrombocytes. Thrombocytes. I think thrombocytes are plated. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't. Know. So I don't think thrombocytes are plated. Well, I don't know. No, just like all, all of them are, in this case are leukocytes because leukocytes share the CD45. Okay, so thrombocytes are leukocytes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, now leukocytes they're they're different. Granulocytes. Okay, what does granulocyte have on its uh, on its surface? CD15. Monocyte. CD14. T lymphocyte. CD3. B lymphocyte. CD19. Thrombocyte, CD61. These things we have to memorize. طيب. What all of them have in common as well? CD45. طيب. Now, the next question that you might may be thinking, do, the, do all of those cells have the CD34, which was on the stem cell? No. Once they move into differentiating into a unique cell, they shed off that CD34. They don't have it anymore. Okay? Only stem cells, here look, only stem cells have CD34. Now, let's go further down the tree. Does the CD45 that we originally had shed off? No, it will always stay in this case. It's not like the stem cell. Now, a T lymphocyte, what can it what can it be? It can be two things or three things, as, as mentioned here. The helper, which helps to activate other cells, release cytokines, cause inflammation, activate important things. Okay, in this case, the helper is the CD4 cell. It also contains CD3, like we know, a T lymphocyte uh, marker, a CD45, like we know, the leukocyte marker. And in this case, the unique thing about it is the CD4 marker, which can be used to bind to what MHC2s when we discuss further. Okay, just know four times two, eight times one equals eight. The, the, the second thing that we are gonna talk about here is the is the cytotoxic T cell, okay? Cytotoxic T cell, has a unique mark on it, so because CD8. Of course, it has the CD45 to tell us that there's a leukocyte, and it has the CD3 to tell us that it's a T lymphocyte leukocyte. Okay. And finally, the activated T lymphocyte, and in this case, CD45, CD3, and CD25. All of those markers that you see right here should be should be memorized, memorized, and hence this slide. This slide maybe dives into two more like NK cells here, CD56, CD16. Memorize those, because they will ask us. But why are those markers important? Why are they important? Why do, why do we need them? Because sometimes, let's say in any uh, blood test that is happening in the, in, the, in the hospital, they would need 
to actually test how much or how low, how high is or how low your, let's say, uh, mm, white blood cells are. Specifically, let's say T cells. So in this case, we design antibodies that bind, in this case, CD3. Now, we count how many cells of CD3s are there using machines. Boom, gives us the results. We have numbers. And they tell us, okay, uh, your CD3 is a low. Now we can what do with, do with, what with this is uh, diagnose what disease this, this patient has. For example, okay. But there's so many uses for those markers. Okay. This slide, I, I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I didn't look into it or anything. I didn't memorize anything in this. But with time, we'll be required to actually know all of those cells and what they release. And we will be naming those cells according to what they release. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And also what the function of those. Yes, what the function of those are. I know that. Um, and and uh, like for example, antigen presenting cell. These are the cells that present things to cells to help activate them and tell the body, okay, there's there's this molecule that you need to attack. For example, okay. Mm, I don't want to take so much time in this because it can take forever. Let's move on. But whoever wants to memorize this, go ahead. I'm not going to do it now. Play. Play. Hassa, the actual core of the presentation starts. Now we know the markers on the cells. Yes. And we will dive into now the different ways in which scientists are able to isolate cells and put them into groups and, and, and look at them on graphs uh, and, and separate them into what markers they have and what markers they don't have, their size, their granulations, their functions, etc. Okay. So the first thing that we need to know is in any test, you need a sample from the body directly. Okay, and we have so many samples that we can collect from the body. And in this case, we have blood, bone marrow, fluids, such as a cerebral spinal fluid, and tissue samples. Okay, memorize two or three, maybe they'll ask you from this. And then finally, uh, the tissue samples, they are basically uh, uh, hard tissue. So such as, such as here in, in, in the case of biopsies. Biopsies are basically when we cut off a part of a tissue and use it to... Uh, test. So when when you have a biopsy, like a, a one clever friend of mine said, when you have a biopsy, mm, this biopsy is a tissue. So you need to break that tissue down to get to the cells that we want to have tests on. And in this case, we need mechanical fragmentation, like break it down mechanically. Enzymatic digestion, we expose it to, an, to enzymes that digest it into smaller parts. Or we even use a nylon mesh. And, and here, this mesh that she talked about, you can rub this, this tissue using a nylon mesh, breaks it down and get it down to the number of cells or the individual cells that we need. And we suspend all of this content in a, in a, in a saline solution. Okay? okay? Now we have our cells. We have this population of cells that are a mixture of different things, erythrocytes, white blood cells, uh, whatever is in the subplatelets, yes? Now, we are able to say, okay, and I want to test CD4s. We expose to what comes next. طيب. Okay, Hon, you have assays. And what are assays, Aslan? They are the things, they are methods that are help helping us as scientists to separate individual in, in individualistic cells into populations. For example, here, like we explained earlier, an immunophenotype assessment in this case, CD classification. Basically, we are separating the cells that have CD3s, such as T lymphocytes, uh, the B cells that that uh, that have uh, CD19, CD20 on their own. So we're just separating them into populations, okay? Or we can also separate the cells according to their function. If they are a function, if if they are a phagocytic cells, if they're an antigen presenting cells if there are a cytotoxic T cells, okay? We, can't, we, we don't only differentiate them according to what they have on their uh, cell surface, which is good. We can also differentiate them and separate them using tests that, that test whether they are a phagocytic cell, an antigen-presenting cell, uh, a, 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 a lymphocyte, or whatever, okay? And these functional tests will be discussed with us in the third class, which is what we're going to take tomorrow. So tomorrow you go in, you're going to be asked about what I'm explaining right now. 
but the actual lecture will be about how we can separate cells according to their function. تمام? طيب. Okay, any questions so far? If not, I'll continue. Okay. Uh, cell isolation methods um, based on physical characteristics. طيب. هلأ هون physical characteristics such as their weight, for example. Their weight we have used in our last uh, class a practical method called centrifugation in a density gradient. And hence, we have separated the cells into layers. And how did we do that? By centrifugation. Centrifugation is a fast speed rotation that causes the highest density cells to sit at the bottom while the lightest ones sit at the top. And then so these cells will now take different layers. As you guys have seen in the tests uh, that in the tests that we did when I was messing up it, you know, like last class. Last, last. And then we what we did, the layer that was foggy, we calculated, we took and separated only that layer. And then we centrifuged it again to actually let the cells dive deep down and then use those cells to look at in the microscope. So this, this method that you have seen live is basically telling you it's a cell isolation method. Okay. <clears throat> so mainly what we have seen under the microscope in that thing we did in the class is lymphocytes. You have seen lymphocytes. Okay. The second thing, adherence methods. The ability to adhere to glass or plastic. Mm, and so this is, I'm not really sure about. I don't know if Kareem or Diana can actually say it because I discussed it with them. But in this case, cells adhere to a glass or a plastic material. And in this case, maybe we are just aiming for the cells that we actually want or we don't want negative or positive selection. And I will explain what a negative selection and a positive selection in a bit. Tell me. Yes, it, 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 actually in, in both, you know, in the three parts here, I'll, I'll explain. Okay. And then last one, osmotic shock cell elimination. We are shocking cells, specific cells, in this case, hemolysis of erythrocytes, break, breaking them down. And leaving the cells that we actually want to test, in this case, immune cells, to look at. So we're killing erythrocytes and uh, looking at the white blood cells. Oh, yeah. um, now, based on the characteristics on the surface or even intracellular uh, uh, antigens, antigen on the surface, antigens on the, uh, on the inside of the cell can be used to separate those cells and look at them individually. Oh, yeah. Rosette formation, I have not studied this. I don't know if anybody can explain this. If yes, just open the mic and, tr and try. If not, Sorry, what was that? Could you repeat that part? What did you say? This one, Rosette. Do you know it? Rosette. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Is, is, isn't, didn't the teacher say it's like the, the, the sediment that forms? Sediment? I'm not sure. I'm not sure, bro. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Mm. Well, I don't know. Rosette, Rosette formation. This is a vital formation of clusters consisting of cells surrounded by antigen cells or antigen-bearing particles. Mm, I don't know, Allah. I have to read it, but like I don't think because in the in the presentation it's not mentioned. Right now, let's get to the most important parts. These are these are the things that may actually confuse the students. Um, the first one that she discussed in class was the immunoadsorbent application. Immunoadsorbent. Okay. Right. This is an assay. What is this basically? And before diving into it, this slide shows you what you have done in class last time. You are just differentiating or separating those cells into different uh, uh, layers according to their weight by centrifugation okay and then collecting the cells that um, uh, you really need them which is in this case peripheral blood mononuclear cells Karim, this is yes what are the peripheral blood mononuclear cells uh, mono uh, mononuclear cells mm. Like, uh, like monocytes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like leukocytes. Okay. Okay. So basically, we looked at... Well, leuco like leukocytes that have one one nucleus. Okay. So basically, last time, we have looked at lymphocytes, monocytes under the microscope. We Remember, this was the foggy layer that you took with a syringe and put on the put a, uh, a drop on the slide and then put tryptophan. Can you guys remember what tryptophan... Uh, no, trypt... Trypto 
Tryptophan blue, I think, yes. Tryptophan blue was used for. Can you guys tell me? Can you can you remind me? Because we said it in class. Wait, wait, don't say it, don't say it. I, I'll try to remember. Mm -hmm. uh, before I remind you, for anybody says, we I placed, remember. We placed a drop on the on the slide, I, and then we put yeah. the tryptophan blue on it. I remember. The dead cells are taking the blue in, and the living cells yeah. fighting it because very toxic. Exactly. So Karim and Adrian, Karim said it last class, and Adrian just said it. We have placed a drop of blue tryptophan on the slide containing the drop of blood cells so that we expose the dead cells to tryptophan where they actually absorb it. Why do they absorb it? It's because they have a misfunctional cell membrane. And so that tryptophan can actually penetrate into the cells and sit in it. While the cells that we actually need and are healthy cannot absorb the tryptophan blue because their cell membrane is fully functional and not broken down. Okay? Good? Okay. That's the density gradient cell isolation. Let's go back. We have just discussed this. Okay? Play. The next thing. This is the immunoadsorbent assay. And what is this? We're basically talking about a method that will help us separate cells according to the antigens present on the surface. Not their weight, not their physical characters. We're here now. We're just we're 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 describing methods used to separate cells according to the um, antigens on their on the cell membrane. Okay. Play. Very simple. And before I start, who can explain what panning is? Because I didn't I don't know what that is. Panning. I don't know what panning is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know when you're uh, morning. No, no, I don't. Need. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, panning. Panning is a photographic technique that combines a slow shutter speed. Oh no, um, I don't know. Play. If anybody knows, tell me. But what is an immunoadsorbent assay? What does it do? You have a petri dish, a plate. On the lower surface of the plate. Yeah, and you'll, uh, the, like, the, the obvious surface, if you look into the plate, the obvious surface is mm, supplied with standing antibodies here. See? Standing antibodies. طيب. What did we say? Antibodies bind to antigens. Yes? And so, where are those antigens? They are found on the cells. طيب. Do, are we interested in antibodies binding to any antigen? No. So we now choose an antibody that is specific for binding to an antigen that is also a, a, a sign of interest in this case. For example, we're going to put the uh, antibodies on the Petri dish that bind specifically to the antigen CD3 on um, T lymphocytes, for example. Now we are ready. We have the antibodies set. Now we put the solution that has all of the cells, not only the cells that have CD3s, all of the cells, including red blood cells, platelets, CD3s, CD4s, everything. Yes? When we put them, what's going to bind to our antibodies if these antibodies are specific to CD3s? They're going to bind to the CD3 antigens on those cells. Now, when those cells bind, the rest of the cells that didn't bind is something that we don't really don't care about. We wash them off. This, what I just explained, is positive selection. We are selecting for the things that we really actually want and washing off the things that we don't want. We can also do the opposite. Yeah. Do you hear me? Hmm? Do you hear me? Yes, right? Yes, I hear you. Because isn't this just like panning what they mean? Like because you wash it off, and the I think it's like just a synonym for the immunoabsorbent assay, isn't it? Like because mm. that's the only thing that comes to my mind. Because I also googled it, mm -hmm. and it's also talking about the lymphocyte, like some tests with lymphocytes. So it would be just this, I think. Okay. So perfect. So. If she says panning, that's, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Actually, uh, just uh, she, uh, she uh, said it before me. 
اوكي سو اف شي اف شي بلانينج اند شي ترايز تو سكير يو جست سي وات اي جست سيد طيب بيكوز ناو اي اولسو جوجلت ات اند سيد ام بلانينج فور اولمبيسايت اتس لايك ا ميثود فور سيلف سيلكشن سو ذاتس وات شي مين اتس جست ا سينام اوكي طيب ناو وي اي هوب يو انديرستود بوزيتيف سيلكشن وي ار سيلكتينج ذا سيلز وير انتريستد ان واشينج اوف ذا ثينجز وي دونت نيد طيب ذاتس بوزيتيف طيب واتس نيجاتيف A negative selection is when we use antibodies that are that are able to select anything other than CD3. Mm -hmm. Something like what in this case? If let's say our um, cell population is filled with uh, lymphocytes, something like CD45. Why? Is because mm, no, no. I'll change this example. Fuck it. Let's not concentrate on antigens. Now we are doing negative selection, yes? In this case, we are using antibodies that are able to bind to anything other than CD3, okay? In this case, all the cells that, let's say, are not having CD3s are able to bind. And so in this case, the cells that we really don't want bind, and the cells that we want stay unbind. So when we do the first wash, We are basically washing that's the cells that we want because the cells that we don't want are attached. And this is negative selection. Any question? Okay, good. Wow. Interesting. And okay, now let's let's dive into let's say a more specific and a, a little bit um yeah. A little bit uh, maybe confusing, but it's very simple. Okay, now we have uh, eight minutes. Once it stops, I will quickly reestablish a new link. So just enter if it if it cuts out. By Max, remember what's the full form of Max? Max is a magnetic activated cell sorting, cell sorting, cell separation. Magnetic activated, so magnet is involved. By what's the complex that we used to sep uh, we used to separate those cells? We have a magnet. We have an antibody and we have a cell. This is the complex. The magnet is used, or a magnetic bead is used to help us do the separation using a magnetic field that is established by this machine right here. I'll explain in a bit. Now, let's say we want to, I'm going to always go back to CD3 because it's simple. We want to have the cells that have CD3. What do we do? Antibody that specifically binds with its FAB region to CD3 antigen on those cells. This antibody, if it's on its own, we would not benefit from it. So what do we do? We use a magnet, a magnetic bead. We attach the, the magnetic bead to the antibody. So magnetic bead, antibody. Now, We get this uh, formation, put it in the solution of the uh, cells that are uh, put it in the, uh, put it in the tube of the cells that contain all of the cells. Then we put this antibody magnet uh, bead inside the solution. What will they bind to if they're specific to CD3? They will only bind to the cells that have CD3 antigen. Okay. Now and we're done. We have our anti. We have our uh, test tube. This test tube contains all of the cells and contains the complexes of CD3 cells with the beads con uh, 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 beads uh, beads antibody complex. Okay. Now, if we expose this test tube, just like here, to a magnetic field, and this magnetic field, these these orange boxes right here, are basically north, south, north, south, north, south. And so this is a magnetic field. It's a magnet. Magnets attract magnets. So when I put this test tube into this, this magnetic field, what's going to get attracted to it? The cells that have CD3. Why? It's because they have antibodies, and these antibodies have magnets on them. Boom. They, they, they attach to this magnetic field. Now, if I first wash, what comes out? The cells that we don't want. So in this case, this is positive selection by Max. Easy. The second thing, we can do negative selection. We can use antibodies that are, are non-specific and can bind to anything 
that does not contain CD3. And so when the magnets bind in this time, what, what, what binds? The cells that we don't want. So when I wash the first time, we get the cells that we want. And so in this case, this is negative selection. When I say negative selection, we are selecting the beads, always. Selection, selecting the beads. They can either be bind to the cells we want or to the cells that we don't want. Anything that is washed off, either the cells that we want or the cells that we don't want. And hence, negative and positive selection. Okay? Any questions? Okay, good. Wow, interesting. Oh, yeah. um, I'm saying wow, well, I think that when we don't have questions. Yeah, man, it's, it's nice. <laughs> um, uh, you want up? No, no, so you already explained. Something. Yes, this is this is what I just basically explained. Um, you see, magnet cells with beads with with antibodies attach. If these cells are the ones that we want, positive selection. If these cells are the cells that we don't want, negative, negative selection. selection. And then washing off either the cells that we want or the cells that we don't want. Okay. Easy. Again, what's max? What's the full form of max? Magnetic, mm -hmm. activated, mm -hmm. cell, mm -hmm. sorting. 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 <laughs> Magnetic, <laughs> activated, cell, sorting. Easy. طيب. Now, يا ويلي. Is this a good week of a practical? والله يا خصم بالله. طيب, flow cytometry. Now, same arrangement of cell antibody and the and the uh, substance that, you, that is used for separation. But in this case, the substance is not a magnet. What is it? It's a fluorescent molecule. A molecule that reflects light when light is shined on the cell. Any questions? Because this part is can be very confusing. We just add colors. Instead, basically, you see this part? In the previous one, it was a magnet. Yes. Now it's a fluorescent uh, uh, molecule. Which binds to the cell. Which binds to the antibody that binds to the specific antigen on the cell. Okay. Okay? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Masi. Hassa. We go to the actual... Why don't you make a break now? And then you start a new lecture. Like yeah, let's 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 take a quick two minutes break. I'm gonna re-establish the link before we start this. Um, yes, yeah, so let's stop this while wow, my brain is, is very slow. Quick question. Tomorrow they will ask about lectures two. Tomorrow they will ask yeah. about class two. Only class two. Only class two. Don't trust me. You're gonna be asked about something that's not class two. We beat the three of them up. I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> no, the the lecture two contains stuff from lecture from class contains two. yes no yes contains uh, stuff from class one. It's innate, so don't worry about it. Okay, because we were at, we were already asked about it. Don't worry about it. Stop uh, stop sharing. One second. I'm gonna switch this off and then reestablish another one. <laughs> Stuff yeah, man. It sounds it's, like it's a starting airport that way. Okay, let's go, oh, bro. Enter. I don't. Yes, bro. How much left, bro? I'm getting really sleepy. Look, it's very. Uh, it's, it's just this one. It's just this one. Close eye to me. Okay. Nice luck. No, bro, oh, my head is spinning. Okay. Take the other. Here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Charge this. We'll be done quickly, I promise. You guys can go sleep then. This is my turn. Well, no, I have no idea. Who took like my turn? Me. Somebody of you. And I get my charging thing like that. Okay. Um, let's begin, yes? Sunny, when had you come? Like you had it.
Wait, wait, no, no, I'm just hearing that one. Uh -huh. um, okay, so facts. Again, fluorescence activated cell sorting. Okay. Instead of magnetic, fluorescence. Okay. طيب. It's good that they have a section this here. Cells are incubated with fluorochrome. Labeled antibody. What does this mean? Fluorochrome antibody, right? This complex. So are everything, everything in the blood sample, the cells, we are incubating those cells with that structure, fluorochrome labeled antibody. Okay. Um, in this case, then, okay, it's fine. Uh, in this case, the laser beam that they're talking about right here is when it shines on our cells or our complexes that have the fluorences, the fluorence, the antibody, and the cell. Now, fax is basically a machine that has we we place our uh, um, sample has all of those cells and those cells are pushed. When they're pushed, they're in huge population. So when they get into this narrow tube, okay, it's happening. Yes, when they're pushed into this narrow tube, they go into it one by one, and one by one we scatter or shine light on them. The laser beam is dispersed by a single cell structure. Yeah, any one cell. We shine one laser beam on one cell. Excites fluorescence if a fluorochrome is bound to the cell. Light, that complex, the fluorochrome is there. Boom, when light hits it, it shines it off. It, it, it becomes fluorescent. Data is collected by and analyzed by light scattering, fluorescence emitted, and then we actually cell sort those cells according to the fluorescence that they emit. Okay? It's just a general idea. Now here. The cell drives through that, that tunnel. Yes. The cell gets shined light on. Yes. It either causes forward scattering, side scattering, or both. Yes. Or even none. And hence, you see like what Kareem did last, last, last class. He got forward uh, and side, and he put monocytes, lymphocytes, granulocytes on different sides. Uh, different different sites on this graph. Why is because they have different granulation, different sizes. Okay, طيب. Now tomorrow they may ask you, what does the forward scatter measure? What do we know? Size. Forward scatter means beam comes, goes into the cell, beam continues on the straight line and is detected by a detector at the end of that straight line. If the light is in small concentration, this means that the cell has absorbed. The more the absorption, the larger its size. Okay, خلاص. Forward scattering. It means that there's no granulation inside of it, and so the light passes, and that detector detects it. Okay. Side scattering. It means oh, that... brother, wait, wait, wait! You confused them. No, forward scattering is size. Yes, but you said something now. You said if if it absorbs the light, it's more granular than uh, oh, the forward scatter is less. Light scatter is cells granularity. Yes, yes, yes. I just meant forward scattering. The more light that goes through, uh, the smaller the cell. The more, the less light that goes through, the larger the cell. That that's all I said. Yes, that's right. Yes. Does it not granularity is side scattering? Yes. Now side scattering is granular granularity. Okay. Now the more granulation inside the cell, the more scattering happens. Why? It's because those granules are of different shape. Okay. Now I explained those two th uh, theories separately. But you have to imagine it combined. The cell that we have are not always empty. Okay. So they may be big, but they still have granules. So they will do both forward and side scattering. And so that's why they can specifically uh, label where the cell is exactly on that graph. Because that graph is basically forward and side. Tamam? Forward and side. So size and granulation, both, uh, both um, uh, combined together. So if it's really large and has little granulation, you can find it in a, in a specific point on the graph because it's a combination of both uh, uh, values. Okay? 
Do you understand? No. Okay, so for example, I'm a cell. Yeah. And uh, uh, I have, I, I'm a cell and I'm large. Okay, okay. Haytham is, has a large body, but his body is filled with organs. Mm -hmm. If I'm large, I'm able to do forward scattering. Yeah. Okay, and I'm able to also do side scattering. Why? Because there's organs in my body. In, in my body. They will reflect. Yeah. If, if Haytham is, is large, but he has no organs. Then it's forward. It's forward only. And so in this case, we are only measuring size, yes? But but how do I, how do I explain this? Well, is there a possibility to... Can I do it? Yes, bro, please, please, because I, I get it. But I can... question. Yes? Okay. So... Just like a possibility to just have side scattering. Yes. And how do you distinguish between... No, 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 you can't. Okay, uh, uh, can you explain? Okay. So let's compare two people, for example. Uh, Diana's here, right? Me and Diana. Yes, okay. for example. Okay, so first of all, um, you, me and Diana go through the flow cytometry. Okay, first of all, you won't, won't think me and Diana, I think, are approximately the same height. Okay, so we're going to be the same, the same size. So uh, therefore, we're going to have the same value for forward scatter. Okay, so forward scatter is if you imagine, for example, a shadow. Okay, forward scatter is when light goes through, you create a shadow of a certain height okay and this height reflects your size mm -hmm. so me and diana will have a, a, a shadow that has the same height because we are the same height okay so that's that's the measure of forward scatter okay now me and diana even though we're the same height uh i'm slightly i'm darker okay for example let's say darker because i have more granules in my skin or whatever but i'm dark okay so even though we have this we we also have Detectors, not just behind, so that measures just the shadow, okay? So it's behind is the forward scatter uh, detector, but all around are detectors, okay? So um, I will absorb more light than Diana because I have more color. Diana will reflect more light, okay? So in this case, the granular cells, okay, will the granules, the, the light will bounce off the granules, whereas in non-granular cells, the, the the light goes through, okay? So the receptors, if they detect a lot of light getting bounce, bouncing off the cell, that means there's granules that are bouncing off this light, off the cell, into the receptors, okay? Or the, the, the detectors, you know? So uh, me, for example, because I have a lot of granules, okay? Or um, I have bumpy skin, then the light, the, 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 they will detect side scatter you know the the detectors will detect side scatter because i have more granules so even we'll have the same forward scatter but different granularity and similarly i could have the same granularity as someone else but different forward scatter okay so forward scatter imagine it as a shadow of the person a shadow of the light shining directly in your face okay whereas the side scatter is more of the light like that you reflect off okay because of your granules so you're not transparent if you're transparent then you don't reflect light light goes through you if you you uh if you are transparent if you're not transparent then you will bounce off the light the stuff inside you will bounce off the light the granules does that make sense kind of yeah, so okay no i understand for, for example like, this, I... you see the cell this is, this is basically a cell the cell it does both forward scattering and side scattering. Why? Because it has some stuff inside it. Yes. So the forward scattering measures its measures its size from here to here. Okay. The the side scattering would measure how much granules are inside and reflects it. Side scattering will have detectors all around. Forward scattering only behind. Yes? Now when we label this on the graph, it's different for all the cells. Mm. Because not all cells will have the same exact requirements. Mm. See what I mean? And not all cells will have the same exact size. And so they will be separated on this graph differently. I understand. But they're a combined value. Because mm -hmm. the cell is one. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll explain more when we, we have a graph. Now, in this case, what this uh, slide says, um, you have, let's say, uh, an antigen on the cell, 
here let's say one two three four five six seven eight yes eight antigens of let's say the cd3 for example mm -hmm. is on this cell and we have eight complexes binding to that specific antigen so, so this cell will reflect more light mm -hmm. compared to this cell having less antigens reflects less light okay خلاص. this is basically telling us i have two separate antigens let me connect this to the same exact thing we took in class maybe it's easier fitc and pe are cd8 and cd4 mm -hmm. cd8 and cd4 what are cd4 cells t helper what yes. are cd8 t helper uh, oh, cytotoxic yes uh, cytotoxic yes now remember this plus 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 negative plus negative 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 yes what does this graph mean it says it tells us fitc pe imagine cd4 cd8 this part has cd8 cd4 here cd8 plus plus cd8 and cd4 That's yes this part has only cd8 if we're saying this is cd8 mm -hmm. no cd4 this part has cd4 no cd8 mm -hmm. this part has anything but cd8 and cd4 okay negative negative yeah that's it okay. we're basically calculating the number of those things on uh, in our pop cell population these cells have that these cells have that these cells have that. these have that uh, so that's the like um what's called the what's come out of the fluorescent thing. yes yes so that fluorescent is basically binding to that uh, cd3 or cd4 and we separate them according to what they have mm -hmm. using flow cytometry okay yep um this is data presentation count number of cells that have um the fluorescence mm -hmm. okay um it's just fuck it it's okay not important now gating now um i expose all of the cells to our flow cytometry and the flow cytometry separates them according to the antigens on their surface Ashi? and all of them are black so we don't know what what cells are where in this graph? Where is my B cells? Let's say for example. In this case, we want to say, okay, طيب, where are my B cells? I can do gating. What does gating allow me to do? It allows me to select a certain type of cells and tell me where on the graph those cells are found. Okay. How do I do this? I use a green light. I use an antibody bind to this green light. This antibody binds to my CD18, uh, CD19, CD20 on the B cells. Mm -hmm. Boom, I activate it. It tells me exactly where are, let's say, my B cells or lymphocytes in this case. Okay. So in this case, these black points right here were actually my B cells. Mm -hmm. Type. Now we want to know and see of those lymphocytes, which ones have a specific antigen. Mm -hmm. Okay, how do these here separate into these four populations? They took those four populations and worked with them on this graph. Let's say again, CD4, CD8, yes? Yes. We separate those orange label or green label cells into populations that have plus, 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 minus, plus, minus, negative, negative. Okay. By just saying, okay, in this case, it only has CD4. In this case, it only has CD8. In this case, it has both. In this case, it has other yeah, than. Okay. Okay. We took those cells and worked to see which ones have that antigen. خلاص? Easy? Easy? So what's gating? Um, you take... Okay, I have to say, you take an antibody with a color. Mm -hmm. Put it on the cell you want to know. Yes. And then you get the green color. Yes. And so it tells us on the graph where they are. Yes. طيب, how do we get to the next graph? If we say we want to have CD4 or CD8. Yes. And we search for this specific antibodies and the specific data we yes. have in green. Mm -hmm. And then we have plus, 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 minus, minus, minus. Yes. So we just basically separate them according to what antigens they have. Yes. Easy? Easy. طيب. This is, okay, here. What, what does it say here? Dual color analysis. In this case, they basically did 
different colors for CD4 and CD8. Same logic. But in this case, I choose blue color for CD4, green color for CD8. So just make and separate them. Plus. Easy? Mm -hmm. Okay, now the numbers in the class. This may be confusing for so many. طيب. If it says, you have, as we remember, plus plus, yes? Yes. Plus negative. Plus negative, negative negative. Mm -hmm. طيب. Plus plus, يعني I have CD3 and CD4. Plus plus, I have them. Yes. طيب. That's 50%. How many CD3s from the percentages here you have? How many, how many, what's the percentage of CD3s? Give me the total number of CD3s. If I tell you this is CD3 and CD4, this is CD3 only, what's the percentage of CD3? 35. Huh? 75. 75, why? 50, 50 plus 25. Plus 25, 75. But why it's here CD3 and CD4 negative? It's CD3 negative and CD4 negative. So you ask just for the positive part? I Yes, because when you so see everything else. Negative. Yes, oh, yes, okay, it's, it doesn't sense. exist. Yeah, it's okay, okay. Okay. I have a brain fart. طيب. I want only, uh, I want CD3 and CD4, only. CD3. Positive, positive. CD3 and CD4? Yes. That should be then 80. CD3 and CD4 together. 50. 50%. 50. Exactly. Tamam? Yes. طيب. Now, I want CD3. No, CD4 negatives. I want the CD4 negatives. Yani I don't 45. want CD4 to exist. 45. Why did he say 45? Tell me. I want CD4 to be negative. Yani I don't want CD4 to be present. It takes 25. Yes, why? Hona, it in this case. CD3 positive and then it's no CD4. Exactly. Makes sense. This part is also CD4 negative. Yes. Okay, طيب. now I want CD, uh, CD, wait, CD4 negative. You just said, you just said that, brother. Uh, CD3, CD3 negative, sorry. Uh, Seventy percent. Actually, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. It's uh, uh, twenty-five. Twenty-five. This part has no CD three. Yes, this this one here. This one has no CD three. Yes. Yes. This has only CD four, so it does not have CD three. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is C. These two regions are CD three negative. So five plus twenty plus twenty is twenty-five percent. Bro, I caught it. You got it? Yeah, I'm just getting confused with the negative part. Yes. So when it says CD3 negative, CD3 is not present. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Everybody clear? Yes. No. Okay. So Thank if, you. So if we ask if we just want to have CD4s, it's only 55%. Only CD4s? So CD4 positive, CD4 positive should be just 55%. Exactly. Okay. So CD4, CD4, 55%. Mm -hmm. Easy? Okay, done. This one, what Kareem did in class. This is what I'm talking to you about. The the forward and the side scattering. Okay. Mm Hala -hmm. monocytes, yes? Yes. Monocytes in this region. Mm -hmm. Monocytes exist in this region. And they're supposed to fuck this one, yes? Maybe this is mm -hmm. inaccurate. But in region, in, in real life, monocytes are the largest white blood cells, yes? Mm -hmm. If they're the largest white blood cells, on the forward scattering, which measures size, where it will be? The most yes, so it'll be towards the right. Yes. More numbers, yes? Because yes. larger size. Yes. If it if it's if this monocyte also has less number of granules inside its cell, where will it be? Down or up? Down. Down. Why? Because it measures side scatters, measures granulation. Yes. So if less scattering means less granules inside it, so less value of granulation for monocytes. And so this is why I'm telling you, different cells contain different granulation and different sizes will be situated and labeled on this graph in different positions. Come on. Come on. That's why both are, are quantities that should be combined because it's one cell. Mm -hmm. طيب. I hope this is, this is very clear. طيب. Now this part, isotype control. Clear everything from your brain. Now, get an antibody mm -hmm. and get a cell. Yeah. طيب. Cell has CD3. Antibody is basically a Y. طيب. 
طيب now an antibody has an FAB region okay. which is specific to a CD3 on the cell yes طيب and it also has an FC region yeah. which is specific to anything يعني it's basically non-specific so it binds to anything mm-hmm. طيب now when I tell you Adriana um, put the antibodies on in the in the solution that has those cells Yes. Mm-hmm. What we think is that this antibody will only bind this way. But it cannot because it has also the other one which can bind to the other thing. Yes. طيب. Now when it says, oh, the number of our cells that uh, are bound to the specific antibodies is let's say 50. Are we sure that all the all of anti- antibodies bound this way? No. No, it can bind also this way. So in this case, those specific antibodies are not really specific because the FC region also is functional. طيب. How do we use isotype control to get off the mistakes, which is the binding of this region? We use an antibody that only has the FC region. Remove this part. Now, if we put only this part, it will still bind to the things that it bound to. In that first trial, Mm-hmm. And so we will have this number, the new one, where FC region bound to the cell. And we will have, we'll take the original number, which has all the bindings of this and this, subtract them mm-hmm. to get the real ones, okay. to get this region mm-hmm. numbers only. And so hence will give us the exact amount of cells okay. that got the really specific binding to happen. Okay. All of this is, I don't know, this is just fancy, but basically that's what, they, that's what mm-hmm. they're saying. Okay. Okay. Yes. Any questions? No. I hope it's clear. And then for the rest of the presentation, it's basically telling you how we are get, how we are able to use flow cytometry right. in medicine. Yeah. Can we find leukemias? Can we find lymphomas? Normal person, leukemia, which means no cells. Yes, and so. You will find low concentration of cells. Mm-hmm. Wow, we we don't have cells. خلاص, we can use it. Yes. Now I don't know. I don't really didn't look into this, but I think it's the same thing. Yes, it's basically the same thing. Because okay. You have diagrams for a normal person and sick person. And from this, maybe memorize three three examples because tomorrow she might explain you what are the applications of flow cytometry in real life medicines. Oh, they are used to find leukemias, lymphomas. They are used to detect antiplatelet antibodies. They are used to detect anti-neutrophil antibodies. Oh, خلاص. Okay. Done. The, the presentation is done. Thank you. You want applause? Thanks. Mm-hmm. Sure. خلاص. Any questions, guys?